Welcome back everyone. Uh, today I want to start a new series on photography and in this instance I'm going to start uh, not with the camera but with the pictures that come out of the camera. Um, later down the track I'll start talking about cameras and equipment and what I use and so forth but I think this is an important one and the reason being this is specifically if you're a raw camera shooter and um, by the way, before I go any further, um, the apps I'm going to be talking about and the, the app that I will finally be showing you is a Mac only. So if you're PC, um, unless you're still interested, just I'm sorry. Okay, so why do I shoot in RAW? Um, as a professional, I tend to shoot a lot of pictures when I go to different events and uh, I'm shooting quickly and I'm on the move. The type of events I, I attend mean that um, things happen quickly and you're going to make, and I tend to shoot, well, I do shoot manually. I don't shoot um, any auto functions other than focus. And as, a, as such, um, sometimes you can be a little bit underexposed, sometimes you can be overexposed. Um, but as a result of both shooting manually and uh, and making the adjustments, making the decisions, what shutter speeds I want and so forth, um, and also shooting a raw that gives me at the end um, in post-production the ability to bring out the best um, in the the pictures that I select the ones that I want to pass on to the client so this is my workflow and I also want to be clear about this what I'm talking about is um, not so there's two types of, of raw post-production and one is what I'd call artistic. And that's where you'll take one particular photograph and you'll go through it and you might spend five, 10 minutes, might even spend half an hour for all I know. And you're using masks and you're doing all sorts of things and you're bringing it, you're making an artistic piece out of it. And that's that's fine and I love that. And um, then there's the type of raw where what I wanna do is get the most out of the picture as is without any um, artistic uh, tweaking and so in essence I want to I want to uh, shoot the pictures and then be able to quickly uh, uh, select the pictures I need for the client process them to get the best quality out of them and then send them off to the client that's what this is all about and I have looked at a number of different raw um, applications over the years, and to be honest with you, I have settled on uh, Lumina AI um, on the desktop up until this point. Um, uh, I've, I've had, I've tried Lightroom, um, and look, to be honest with you, uh, for a number of reasons, and especially with the the fact that I have to have the subscription with Adobe, I'm not interested in that. Um, uh, I'm not interested in, in Lightroom, so we'll discount that for the moment. Um, um, I've tried Capture One. Capture One, it, it's a good program, but it's it's still, from a point of view of trying to knock out pictures quickly, I found it wanting. Um, on One, same situation, very capable program, just like Capture One, but being able to get the pictures out quickly, I found it also wanting. Um, on the, oh, then you've got your things like Affinity Photo and um, Pixelmator Pro, both awesome programs, but they're more composting um, type programs for me, uh, single image, to try and to um, quickly and process large quantities of pictures, four, four, five hundred, thousand pictures at a go, no. So then we get into Luminar Camp, and to be honest with you, I, I have found fallen in love with Lumina AI. Look, um, Lumina Neo, which is its latest um, version, I'll be honest with you, at the moment, I think it's still a work in progress. Um, I've got some issues with it. So Lumina AI is, is my go-to. The thing about Lumina AI, which drives me nuts, is that um, its interface is brilliant and, it, and you can quickly process work Get, yeah, sort of basically go through and nut out which pictures you want to keep and throw the other ones away and then process the ones you want. But when it comes to the output, to the actual generating JPEGs, oh my God, you got 400 pictures. Let's say you process 400 pictures and you send them out for uh, to be processed in the JPEG. And this is on a 2019 iMac um, uh, top spec, like it's it's a top machine, 
and well you're looking at a good hour possibly two hours so I'm sorry it's that's that lets me down anyway so I've been hunting around and let's get to the point so there was a program I discovered some time ago um, some years ago actually it was called raw power and it's um, produced by um, a, a group of or I think it might be just one developer but I'm not sure called gentleman coders and you know it was okay but I wasn't that impressed so I forgot about it and um, it's been about three or four years since I played with it and just recently I picked it up again and it blew me away the, the developments that have been going on so there's the the iPad version there's the desktop version on the Mac and there's also one for the iPhone but today I want to talk about the iPad so here we go my trusty iPad Pro the M1 version so this so in essence this review well this this video is about my workflow relevant to um, processing raw pictures on the iPad and the iPad Pro um, M1 and raw power <laughs> what can I say you'll see in a minute so now we're going to um, use the iPad Pro uh, with raw power and the combination as you'll see is is just mind-blowing from the point of view of trying to get pictures processed quickly from the artistic point of view you probably need to go one of the other programs okay so we'll take raw power there we go so let's get some we'll try these buildings here we go so this is an example so um, these are pictures that I've taken at a particular local school and the buildings are incredible so let's try this one here and there we go nice autumn leaves and so forth now the thing I want to show you about this program is that when you hit the edit button and I don't know if you noticed that little kick in and out I'll come back to that in a minute that's to do with the uh, the lens profiles and that's another area that has been letting me down in a lot of the, these pieces of software and this this piece of software has come up with an elegant solution so I can now I'm in the edit mode and here we go all your different um, tools so let's say for instance um, the, the ones I tend to use most so tone so for instance we'll look at shadows we'll just bring the shadows up a little bit um, this recovery is not really relevant to this one it's when you've got um, uh, skies with clouds and so forth we'll come back to that um, I'm not going to, this isn't a review about the camera, this is about my workflow. So uh, then I'll use my enhance. Um, so we do clarity and I might just, I might give it a, just deepen it a fraction. And then we might, we'll go into sharpen. I definitely want to give it about 20, 20, or maybe 30 points of sharpness. Um, to be honest with you, that, this picture was pretty well composed. So I think we might just leave it at that. Okay, that's done. There we go. And so we can go back and uh, that picture I've just done has a little arrow here and it shows you that it's been done. The other thing I want to show you about this program, actually we might go back, uh, what's this one? Yeah, let's show you this one. So this is, here, this is my bike. Lots of pictures I took of this. Now, one of the great things about using the um, iPad is that uh, if you want to uh, go through your pictures and work out which ones you want, Okay, I'll watch, I'll, you're gonna, this is going to blow you away, so just watch this. So I'll start, I'll start here. Okay, so, no, I don't want that picture, we'll slide across, oh, that one I do want. Now watch this, I just flagged that picture. Oops, I went the wrong way. <laughs> I've just flagged that picture by sliding my hand up. On the right hand side of the screen, if you go up, you'll flag it, and on the other side, if you, you can go up and down through the, the stars and put stars on it, I'll cross that. I'm using flags. So we'll go bang. Yeah, we'll take that one. Thanks. Um, yep, another one. No, I don't think I worry about that one. Yeah, I want that one. Uh, yeah, we'll give that one. And uh, yep, that one. And as you can see, very quickly, you can go through and work out what you want. Yeah. Uh, yep, we'll do that one. And look, I think that don't definitely don't want that one. Yeah, we'll do that one. Uh, that'll do for the moment. I want to keep this video fairly uh, 
short. So very quickly, so we go back, all right, in, in this section here. And down here is a funnel. If you hit that funnel and just push flagged, hey presto, that's it. Literally, the pictures that um, that I uh, flagged for wanting to work on. So that goes to show you how quickly you can go through and whittle down what pictures you want. So that's done. So now we'll go here and we'll edit this one. So we'll push the edit button. Oh, before we do that, I want to go back. I want to show you something else. So um, push the edit button, tools. And if you come here, reorder, you can actually change. If you watch, let's say for instance, um, I want to put curves. Uh, I might want to put it up here under tone, between tone. So that when we go, okay, now all of a sudden, there it is. So <laughs> you, you can lay out exactly how you want right, your, um, your processing. So, yeah, anyway, I just thought that's just a little thing that I thought you'd like. So, yeah, okay, let's see when I want to process this. So the first thing I do here, oh, that's what I was going to touch upon, lens. So all apps for Apple devices use um, an API uh, that's developed by Apple. For, it's the RAW engine. And unfortunately, and this applies to a lot of other manufacturers like On One and so forth, lens profiles... Um, there's a lot of them out there, and unfortunately, a lot of them do not end up in these programs. And there are some lenses, and there's one particular lens I've got, the uh, 20, 20, 28 to um, 240 lens. That profile is not there. Now, in a, what this coder has done has literally um, come up with a way so that I can physically come in and make a change to the profile to suit me. See that? We're changing that lens now. Let's just say I'm happy with that. Done. We'll just leave it. Okay, close that lens. Now we can go up and do the rest of the processing. And like I'm going to sharpen and um, let's have a look. White balance. Yeah, I think it's okay. We'll just, yeah, go off a bit and um, so forth. But what, oh, well, well, let's finish this picture off. So um, uh, go enhance. Uh, might put a bit of clarity. Yeah, that's looking better. And we'll leave it at that. This is the interesting thing. If you go out of there, go done, and then go to another picture, if I go edit, that lens, what it's done, it's keeping that lens profile from the previous picture. And so, for instance, if you've taken a group of pictures with that lens, you just have to take one adjustment at on the first picture for that lens and then the rest of it is handled perfectly so there you go so here we go here's another picture um i will sharpen that one um i think the white balance needs just a fraction yeah that's better and overall i think we might have to um just lighten it a bit and we'll give it a bit more clarity and there we go uh, as i said th this is um processing on the quick so that's done uh, there we go oh actually i shouldn't have done that because anyway we can slide back so here we go we'll edit uh, if we leave it in edit mode and you slide back it will automatically save those settings and go to the next picture so here we go um this one i definitely so i always sharpen the pictures i somewhere between 25 and 35 um in this one i think we'll definitely lighten the whole picture up um give it a bit of clarity yeah um, to be honest, there's not much more you need to do with that one. So we'll go to the next picture. Okay. And as you can see, we can start going through these pictures. And for the sake of the exercise with this video, um, I'm going to do something to show you another, um, feature. So we go, I'm going to go back to the picture. So I'm going to go done and we'll go back to that last picture. Um, and we go back into edit. So if you come over to here and we go copy adjustments, all right, so the next picture, okay, paste adjustments, hey presto. And if you want to, if you go done and go back to there, and let's say for instance, we select, um, 
I'm going to select um, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. We'll do the rest of them. This is just for the sake of it. You come down to your batch and then apply. Paste last edit. And that's pasting to all of them. And as you can see, three out of six items. So if you've got a lot of pictures, you can actually process them really quickly like this. You know, um, it's done. Batch process complete. They're all done. That's it. Now, all your pictures are done. Select all batch export. Um, you can make adjustments here. I, I tend to uh, always output my JPEGs um, at 100% quality, uh, and I'll explain that another time. And then we go export. So what happens is that it's, now look how quickly this is. Out of these 10 pictures, I should have timed it, but um, you know, it's only gonna be a matter of seconds. And this is really what I was getting at. And imagine I'm on site, I've taken, I don't know, let's say I've taken 200 pictures and I've whittled through them out of this and I've got 150 and I've gone through and, and made the adjustments I want. I've exported them, okay. And this this is the part that, that I love, the combo between the iPad and, here we go. So I have a thing called process picks, okay. Uh, make a new folder, call it, uh, in this case, I'm just gonna call it test. Um, Uh, here we go, done, okay, move, export complete, right, we get out of here, we go back into here on my iPad, uh, process picks, test, and there they are, as you can see, so, oh, and then once I've done that, um, I, I can literally upload them, I mean, I've got 5G connection. I can upload them to the client. I can upload them to um, uh, uh, SmugMug, which is what I use sometimes, and then send albums. So I can actually set, upload these to SmugMug. Once it's done, then send a SmugMug link to an album to the client. All done. If I'm within the car, using this device and raw power. I really am impressed with the whole setup. So there you go, folks. Um, I'm going to finish here. Um, I'm going to show you on further videos about the desktop unit and the iPhone unit. And then I might cover other aspects of photography as we go on. So I hope you uh, found something here you liked and um, come back for future um, videos. Okay, see you later. <laughs>